Hi, everybody. This is our value exercise. Um, we're going to be working in our sketchbooks. You need a pencil, a ruler, and you can use an object to trace. I've used a little Dixie cup. You could use anything, really. So the first thing you're going to do is your picture is going to be oriented landscape style which just means left to right. And you're going to make something called a tiny border. You're gonna take your ruler and use it to make a smaller picture plane or almost like a little frame inside your sketchbook on your page. And the reason why we do this is because it makes the edges of our drawing very neat and clean and if we want to frame our drawings eventually, it gives us a place to put the frame over without interrupting the picture itself. So it's just a really nice way to prepare all works on paper. The next thing we're going to be doing is using our ruler to mark lines across the page. And the lines can go horizontal, vertical, diagonally, but they have to be straight lines. They also have to intersect one another. Intersect means to go across. You can use one of your shapes at this point um, to intersect some of your lines. I've used a circle, but if you have something else like an oval or a square, or maybe even a star shape, you could do that too. Move your shape around the page to see what works best. So in this piece, I turn the cup upside down because it's got a smaller circle so I can get a little bit of variation in my shapes. I want to add another one and don't be afraid to have your shapes come off of the edge of the picture because sometimes that tends to make things you know appear like it keeps going behind the little frame so it, it's, it makes it a little bit more interesting. Then you're going to use your ruler to make some more lines making sure they go all the way across, you know, whichever direction you choose. One thing that you want to make sure of is that you don't leave teeny tiny little spaces like this. When we start the, the shading part, that's not going to be big enough to get a real um, a good value representation. So move your ruler around to make sure that you have enough space to leave um, little pieces that you can shade in. That smaller piece is probably about as small as you want to go. I'm going to use my Dixie cup to make another circle coming off the page. And then I'm going to look for some more spots to where I can get some more detail with those lines. You don't want to go part through uh, the, the picture. You, you need to draw completely through. So you can't stop midway. It needs to go all the way across, no matter which way you're, you're drawing it, diagonally, horizontally, um, vertically, it doesn't matter. These little spaces, once again, are probably as small as you want to go. Um, I really wanted to add that circle piece one more time, so kind of looking to see whether or not I can fit it in and also leave big enough shapes. Think about this kind of like stained glass, where you take a picture and you divide it up into a bunch of smaller shapes. So here we have our circle, and inside the circle are a bunch of smaller shapes that make up that circle. And what we're going to do is we're going to shade each little piece of that circle a different value. So the first value that I'm going to use is a dark value. So I'm going to put a lot of pressure to make that dark. When I move to the next shape or the adjacent shape, that means the shape right next to it, I want to use a lighter value. To do this, you put less pressure on your pencil. The less pressure you use, the lighter the value is going to be. And don't worry about um, making it perfectly smooth or the texture perfectly even. Sometimes a little bit of texture makes things 
interesting. And also for no part of this assignment, are we going to be using a blending tool or our fingers to shade in at all? This is just to practice our pencil techniques and our pencil control. So because I have this shape touching a lighter shape, I had to make it darker. So this area is gonna be a little bit different and this makes things look kind of cool. So I'm gonna shade in part of it dark and the part of it that's gonna be dark is the part that's touching the lighter shape. And then I'm going to gently ease off that pressure and shade lighter as I get towards the end. So essentially we have a little value chart, a dark to light gradient inside that one shape. Now on the next piece, I have to do the opposite. So where it touches the lightest part, I have to shade in darkly, almost like a checkerboard. And then at this point, I can make things go dark all the way across, or I can lighten them up. But as we touch the darkest parts of those two adjacent shapes, it has to get lighter. Kind of like I said, like a checkerboard. So right here in these areas, I want to be light. So you can tell the difference. But then as I move away from the lighter portions, I can make it darker if I want. You don't have to do this. As long as you have a dark value touching a light value, that's perfectly fine. This makes it a little bit more of a challenge and gives a little variation into the work. Once again, don't worry about having some texture in your, in your lines. That makes things um, visually interesting sometimes. And once again, no blending tools, no finger smudges. This whole exercise is about pencil control. And if you can't do it correct right away, that's what this, ex this drawing is for, so that you can build those skills and practice. And the cool thing is, is that once you learn to do, do this with pencil, you'll be able to do the exact same thing with color pencil. So you can build on skills. Now, on this last piece, I have three dark areas. So that means that entire central piece is going to be a light value. Once again, like a checkerboard. Each one of these pieces defines the circle. Now, I'm going to go around the rest of the drawing and following the same kind of technique where dark touches dark, I mean, I'm sorry, where dark touches light, so you get that checkerboard effect. And in some of these shapes, I'm going to go and use a gradient, so dark to light, like I just did there. And then in some of them, I'm just gonna use all one value, whether it's a dark value or a light value, value, just to give it some variation. Don't worry about keeping your paper one direction the whole time. Feel free to move it around and, you know, whatever gives you that best um, angle to get those, uh, those, those, areas shaded in. So if you notice, I'm going to turn my paper all kinds of different ways. And notice I'm shading from all different kinds of directions. I'm not shading just, you know, up and down or left and right. Whatever works to fit that area. So I'm going to go ahead and continue to work on this drawing. And this will be your example for how your work is going to be. Yours does not have to look just like mine. Like I said, you can use other shapes that are not circles, diamonds, rectangles, stars, ovals, organic shapes, you know, like blobs and things like that. Just making sure that the lines go completely across whatever shape that you use. You also want to make sure that your shapes are not too large. The largest shape I have in this picture is right next to the, the circle in the middle. That's as big as the largest shape in the picture you want, any larger than that. And it doesn't give your work a dynamic look. Dynamic means interesting, engaging. So the more pieces, the better. But of course, remembering 
you don't want a piece so small that it's hard to shade in because it's itty bitty. Once again, noticing that I'm turning my drawing all different kinds of ways to get that all shaded in. And the pencil you're going to be using is going to be a plain old number two pencil. You can do this with darker pencils like Ebony's and 4B's. Um, I would not suggest doing this with a lighter pencil because it makes it much harder to see those value changes. It can be done and it's very elegant when it's done well. For this exercise, however, we're going to be using a standard number two pencil. Number two pencils have a good range of um, marks that they can make, whether it's dark marks or lighter marks. And so I'm just gonna let you guys watch the rest of this to get an idea of what it's supposed to look like when it's finished. <laughs> 